given all of the um, references in the model report regarding the obstruction yeah. done by uh, the White House, what is your line in the sand regarding the impeachment of Trump? Yeah. Well, thank you, Irene, for the work you do uh, in this historic city uh, for you. civil rights. <laughs> the way I approach this as a, a prosecutor is that the rule of law is everything in America. It's the key ingredient. Without it, we lose free speech, free press, free markets, a freedom to dream. We have a lawless president. First things first, I think we should move immediately to impeach the Attorney General and Secretary Mnuchin. <laughs> Their front door obstruction. I'm on the Judiciary Committee as well. And on the Judiciary Committee, I'm the only candidate in this race who would actually have to prosecute this case. So when I would go to court, I'd make sure my subpoenas were ready, my pencils were sharpened, my exhibits were ready to be displayed. We have to get ready for impeachment with this president. And here's why. And I think about it the way I'm raising my two-year-old right now and our seven-month-old. We're doing the one, two, three method. You count to three when your son's bad, take a toy away. If you don't, he's gonna get worse. With this president, he has to see consequences. He's a really bad kid. But the other, the other thing, Irene, the other thing, Irene, is that the other part of this is I think of my daughter who's looking at how I discipline my son, and if I do nothing, the standard of conduct is lower. So future presidents will look at doing nothing as lowering the standard of conduct. Let's impeach Barr and Mnuchin, and let's get ready for impeachment of this president, because he's put us in no other position. Okay. You say, yeah. you say let's get ready for impeachment, yeah. but you've not come, come out publicly to say that the Congress should begin impeachment proceedings. Short time ago, your, your colleague, Tim Ryan, made yeah. news on CNN saying that he now is joining yeah. the call uh, yeah. of, I believe it's now 11 yeah. Democratic candidates in 2020. 76% uh, of Democrats yeah. in a latest CNN poll, they support yeah. impeaching the president. Yeah. Will you take that step? And if not, why yeah. not when you have virtually eight yeah. and 10 Democrats supporting that yeah. move? I don't think anyone's going to question my vigor in holding mm -hmm. this president accountable. You know, I, I think the work that we did in the first two years mm -hmm. when our democracy was under attack, when I was on the Intelligence Committee, you know, wanted people to care so we could get a majority to put this balance of power on abuses of power. But again, as someone who, re who really respects the rule of law, I want us to get it right because we only get one shot. But again, that's where we're headed. I want to be backed into it, showing that we've exhausted every other remedy and have the American people with us. I think that's where we are right now. I'm ready to try this case. Again, I think you have to make an example out of Mnuchin and Barr first, though. You can't let them off the hook. All right, let's, let's go back. Yeah. We'll, we'll go back to the audience. I want to bring in Melissa Labate. She's a homemaker and is planning to re-enter the workforce uh, soon. Melissa? Thank you, and thank you for being I'm here. Um, the current administration has left us wide open to hostile foreign attacks, meaning cyber attacks and even cyber terrorism, yeah. threatening our security. In your first 100 days, what will you do to fight back at Russia's success in weakening America, other democratic institutions, and key alliances such as NATO? And obviously this includes other um, foreign countries such as China. Yeah, yeah. well, thank you uh, for your question. Thanks for caring about our democracy. People get sick and tired around the country uh, when they hear you know, pundits in Washington saying that anyone outside Washington doesn't care about what the Russians did. I know you care about what they did to our democracy. So day one, I will stand up to Vladimir Putin. I will put back in place sanctions until the behavior changes. I will go on a global affirmation tour. So I'm going to take the oath and catch a plane. I'm going to go around the world to assure our allies we're still with them. I'm going to assemble the best and brightest cyber warriors in our country. I think there are a lot of people who want to serve the federal government, but they don't necessarily want to do a lifetime of service. And so we can have like a cybersecurity national guard to defend against what the Russians are doing. But your real question, I think, goes to how can we defeat Russia and other threats in the world when we've alienated ourselves? And when I look at foreign policy today, I look at it the same way a parent looks at their child on the playground. In the last couple years, your kid has gone from hanging out with the honor roll crew, the Brits and the French and the Australians, to today, we roll with the detention crew. The Russians, the North Koreans, the Saudis. 
And what it costs us is we've ripped up treaties, we pulled ourselves out of the Paris Climate Accord, and we can't necessarily count on, on NATO because the president diminishes their role. I'm going to help us get our friends back. I've been on the Intelligence Committee. I've met with foreign leaders. I've gone to war zones. I know the cost of not having friends, and I know the benefit to our country. We'll spend less on defense when we get them back.